हेलो वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्यूबिट एजुकेशनल सर्विसेज वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग द एस आर एफ के डेव टेस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन मॉक पेपर वन एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द सेकेंड लास्ट वीडियो एज फार एज द फर्स्ट मॉक पेपर इज कंसर्न इन विच वी विल बी सॉल्विंग द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी फोर इन द ओरिजिनल पी डी एफ दैट इज द फोर्टीन क्वेश्चन इन द मैथमेटिक्स सेक्शन दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन दिस क्वेश्चन इज बेस्ड ऑन द कोनिक सेक्शन लेट पी एंड क्यू बी द सेंटर्स ऑफ द सर्कल्स that pass through 0 comma 2 and 0 comma 8 both of them lie on y axis points and touch the x axis okay so our circles are touching the x axis and they pass through the points 0 2 and 0 then the equation of the ellipse with p and q as foci and touching the x axis is and of course we have four options we first observe that the ellipses in options a and b contain origin okay origin lies on both of them and that is not the case with options c and d we are going to make use of this observation to eliminate options c and d later okay all right but uh, first we will determine the the centers and the radii of our circles whose centers are p and q okay because the centers themselves will be the are actually the foci of the ellipse that we are looking for okay part 1 we start with the with the points ab which lie on the on the circles so ab clearly forms the common chord of both of them and because both of the points lie on the y axis this chord will be a part of the y axis right all right <laughs> see now if it is it is a chord okay if it is a chord and if its midpoint is 0 comma 5 what does it suggest see the radius of the circle is always perpendicular to the chord okay and not only that it always bisects the chord okay so if the midpoint is 0 comma 5 then the the center of our circle or centers of our circles they must lie on the line y equal to 5 horizontal line okay because of the theorem that we know in the school the radius or the or the line joining the center of the circle and the midpoint of the chord is perpendicular to the chord okay we know that Yes, so we have successfully identified the y coordinates of the points P and Q, right? Let's now go to the x coordinates, and because the circles touch the x-axis, we have also got the radius of the circle. Both have the same radius, that is five units. In part two, we will try to determine the x coordinate. Okay, as we already discussed, the circles touch the x-axis, so radius is equal to five units. So let us assume that the centers have their uh, x coordinates to be positive h and negative h respectively and this is obvious now because you you now know that there will be two circles okay one whose center will be in the first quadrant and the other one will be have its center in the second quadrant okay use the distance formula try to find the distance between points p uh, well points p and this point and point and, and q and this point okay because i mean you can use the distance formula there to to get the value of h because we know the radius to be Okay, so h minus zero squared plus five minus two squared. So I have found out the distance between this point and the point zero comma two. You could even use zero comma eight. You will still get the same answer. All right? Yeah. So h squared plus nine equal to twenty five. That gives us h as plus or minus four. Okay, the standard triplet three four five. So having obtained h, this now gives us the foci of the ellipse, which will be four five and minus four five. Now we observe that both the foci lie on the line y equal to five. Okay, so this ellipse, this ellipse, because its foci are lie on on a horizontal line, this ellipse must be a horizontal ellipse and not vertical ellipse. Okay, so this will eliminate some of the options. We we will come back to that later. Yeah. Now we we are given that our ellipse touches the x-axis. and because its foci are plus or minus 4 and 5 we can conclude that the ellipse has to pass through origin okay for due to symmetry reasons right and and this means it is it is going to be either option a or option b because we have already talked about this when we read the options we said that options c and d have represent ellipses which do not pass through origin so the ellipse passes through origin therefore we have to ignore op uh, options c and d okay now to to decide whether it is a or b we just look for the lengths of the major and minor axis respectively and we find that it is uh, option a which is correct alternately you can say that 
if ae is equal to 4 okay which is the x coordinate of the focus okay what is it telling you if ae is equal to 4 and because the eccentricity of any ellipse is always between 0 and 1 a has to be greater than 4 so a squared has to be greater than 16 and if you go to the option b you will find that a squared is actually equal to 16 so this can't be right so it is option a okay but even if you just make the observation that because that is a horizontal ellipse you can easily rule out option b and hence it is option a okay see in b this is smaller than 25 so this is a vertical ellipse so b is ruled out so it is option a all right but now let's verify our result graphically so this is our graphing calculator we will first plot the points 0 2 and 0 8 okay you can see those two points as two black dots here right and and you can also see the midpoint that is 0 comma 5 so let me draw a horizontal line through this particular point 0 5 okay the blue line which means our points or p and q which are the centers of the two circles passing through these two points as well as the foci of the ellipse that we are looking for uh, both of them will lie on this blue line okay now the other two black dots uh, this one and this one okay what are these these are the centers of the circles which we have determined okay now let us draw the two circles which uh, which have their centers at minus 4 comma 5 and 4 comma 5 both of them should pass through these two black dots on y axis and they should also touch the x axis first one whose center is at 4 5 you can see that it touches the x axis here at 4 comma 0 and hence the other one will touch the x axis at minus 4 comma 0 right yes okay so let me temporarily hide these two circles to get uh, to get the ellipse this black ellipse is the one present in the option a and you can see that this is that this ellipse is a horizontal ellipse passing through origin and because it is horizontal its uh, foci its foci will be on the uh, on, on a horizontal line and in this case that line is uh, this one y equal to 5 Alright, let us also plot the ellipse in the option B. It is this blue ellipse and because it is a vertical ellipse, its foci will be somewhere on the on the y-axis. So that is clearly not something that we want. Okay. Secondly, you may note that the minor axis of the black ellipse is equal to the major axis of the blue ellipse because the blue ellipse appears to be fit in the uh, larger or the black ellipse. All right, but nonetheless, we have solved the problem correctly and we have verified our answer more importantly. And that concludes problem number 44, which was the second last problem. In the next video, we will see the last one that is question 45. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.